Welcome. Today we'll discuss the new features of the billing module in MPA Works for the month of May. The overview is that we now can generate patient statements, we can post payments against statements, and generate invoices and post payments against invoices. We also have some new reports, which we'll see in a little bit. Okay, to get to statements, I go to the billing tab, statements. This window is gonna show me the current statements that are in the system. I can select some filters, click search, and now I am seeing in the middle window, my statements. As I click through, I see the a snapshot of the statement when the statement was created, and I see the charge lines that are on each statement. I'd like to download a statement. I can simply select, click download. This will generate the statements as a PDF. It's gonna ask me to select a folder. I select the folder and it's prompting me to select either zip format or individual files. If I select zip format, it will take those PDFs, those statement PDFs, it'll package them up into one zip file that I can then email off. If I select individual files, it's just going to place those PDF files in a folder. Okay. While the reports are being generated, I can minimize this window and continue working. In this case, they were already generated. We'll click OK, and we can see the statements here. So inside the folder that I had selected, desktop, the system automatically created a folder with the date and time to help keep me organized. And these are the three statements that we uh, downloaded. This is the patient initials, date of service date range for the statement, and the date generated. If I go ahead and open a statement, this is what they look like. If my statement went on to two pages, I would continue to see the second page. Uh, in the future, we will also add aging at the bottom. Okay. So that's what statements look like. If I want to down, uh, delete a statement, I can simply select and click delete. In this case, when I delete, it's gone forever. We cannot recover a deleted statement. If I want to regenerate that statement, I'd have to generate the statement. To generate a statement, click here, generate statements. And here I can capture charges that we haven't seen before. Normally the user would only generate with outstanding balances. That's why we have show outstanding balances only checked by default. I can go ahead and search agency, date of service, clients, and I see my charge lines here along with patient balance. So you can see all of these have an outstanding patient balance. If let's say the family wanted to see the statement for the entire year, or let's say there was a payment dispute, we can unselect this, we can search, and we can generate a statement of charges that were sent to the family uh, for the entire year. Okay. Now, I can select some uh, charge lines. In this case, I'm going to select from a few different clients. So we can see that statements are actually separated by client. So I selected some of these, I click prepare. Now it's, I had selected three clients, so it's showing me three statements. And for each statement, the charge lines for that client that I had selected. And again, I can select these and download. Okay. Now to post a payment, pa patient payment against the statement, I can do one of two things. I can add a payment if it's a new payment or if it's already existing in the system, I can go to payments ledger, find the payment and click apply. In this case, let's uh, see how we add a new payment. For payer type, I have to select client. This way the system will know, okay, we're posting a payment against the statement and the system will show us statements. Now here, uh, let's say 
you have not generated the claim yet. So I can go ahead and collect the statement ahead of time before the claim is generated by collecting the payment up front, and I can make a payment, copay $30 paid at front office. So the front office staff can go ahead and pick it up and they save it. And later, once we have it generated, then we can apply this payment against a statement. In this case, let's go ahead and find an existing payment. Client payment, again. So I select the payment, click apply. And here, because it is a payment of payer type client, the system is automatically going to show me statements instead of claims or invoices. And you can see that the client is locked in. In this case, the client doesn't have any statements. Let's go ahead and select one that we know has. So here we can see all the statements for the client, Steve Aoki. And so you saw that in the previous screen, the client was locked in, I had no results. That's how I knew that that client did not have any statements outstanding. And for each statement, I can click through, I can see the charge lines. For each charge line, I see the transaction history, and I have the regular actions here that are available to me in pay Apply Payment screen. I can enter an amount here, click Save and Next Line, and that portion of the payment is going to be applied to that charge line for that statement. Now the patient balance column is updated uh, to be accrued. So let's say the patient pays only a partial amount of the payment. Next month when you generate a statement for that charge line again, you'll see that partial payment on next month's statement. Now for invoices, you can see my existing invoices in the system by clicking Invoice Manager. It brings up my Invoice Manager window. I can go ahead and search. And to print invoices, I simply select my invoices and click the Print button. Apply payments against invoices. Same deal as with statements, except the payer type must be either district or regional center. So school district or regional center. I'll go ahead and search, click apply. Again, because the system knows the payer type is school district or invoice, it's going to bring up apply payments for invoices. So again, payer type of school district or regional center. And I can scroll through my clients and I can see the invoice for each client. And again, I have the regular actions here available to me. In Claims Manager, we, ha we do have a new status called, here under status, it's going to be called manual posting. Manual posting status occurs when I submitted a claim electronically, I have not yet received an 835, and I enter and post a manual payment for payer type private insurance for that claim. Because the ERA has not been received, the 835, the system is going to change the status to manual payment, sorry, manual posting. We also have some new reports. We have an aging report. Under the billing category, it's called aging by payer. This report is going to show your accounts receivable for aging by all payer types. I'll select the date range. Let's do January 1st to March. And I do have to select basic, report type basic. And I'm grouping it by pair here. 
if I grouped it by client, the second option in this is client. If I grouped it by client, it would simply reverse the grouping. Payer in this case, I'll see my payers here. Underneath each payer, I can see the clients. If I'd select the client here, it would be reverse. I would see my clients and I would see the funding sources for each client within that client. The report will also show, also show me my aging buckets, 0 to 30, 60 to 90, sorry, 0 to 30, 30 to 60, 60 to 90, et cetera. I'll also see my unbilled charges and my outstanding. The existing claims ledger report has been renamed to bill, billing ledger, and that has been updated as well. We also have a new, another new report called charge lines follow-up. So all the actions that were done in the apply payments window for action follow-up, where you can enter a date and a note to follow up on a certain charge line for whatever the reason may be, all of those follow-ups appear in the uh, follow-up report. Here's the aging report. You can see here, the payers are here, clients are here. I can go ahead and expand. I can click on a payer to expand it via this icon here. And I see all my clients for this payer. And I can see the aging buckets. Current 31 and 60, et cetera. If I click on a dollar amount, I'll be taken to the sub report, which is going to show me all the charge lines leading, leading to that dollar figure. So I see my pair name, what was it billed as, primary, secondary, et cetera, client information, CPT code modifiers, charge amount, when it was billed, what was my expected reimbursement, and any client payments. Go back, simply click the back arrow. And again, if I had selected client here and ran the report again, I would see my clients here, and for each client I could expand to see the payer information. Follow-ups report is this, charge line follow-ups. Report type advance, and I can see my uh, follow-ups, along with the notes and the follow-up dates. Those are the new features in billing for the month of May. We've also done numerous uh, bug fixes, improvements, security and performance enhancements uh, behind the scenes. If you have any questions, please contact our support team. We're always happy to help you and have a great day.